Hello, welcome to Algebra 1. We're going to cover an incredibly important topic in algebra, and that's called the distributive property. I've actually kind of taught you a little bit of that recently in the last couple of sections without really telling you that that's what it was. But in your book, whatever book you're using, eventually you'll come across this thing called the distributive property, and you'll see something like this. The book will have something that looks sort of like this. It may, may not look exactly like this, but they'll have something like this, A parentheses B plus C, and they will tell you that that's going to be equal to something like AB uh, plus AC. And then you'll look at that and say, what the heck does that mean? What it's basically telling you is that if you have parentheses with multiple things added or subtracted inside, here I've got two terms, B and C, and I'm adding them together. And then outside I've got the A, which is multiplied by this quantity B plus C. Then that can be written as the same thing. The A, whatever's on the outside, gets distributed. That's why it's called that. Distributed N to the B, and they're multiplied because this is sitting outside multiplied. A times B, the plus comes from the plus on the inside, and then this A also gets distributed to the C, A times C. And I told you that in the last section, we did a couple of problems with a negative sign out in front. And I told you that negative gets applied to everything inside because the negative is sitting out inside of this parentheses, which groups everything together. So whatever's out here, in this case A, it's applying itself to everything, the entire unit. So it has to go in and apply itself like that. And so that's what's called a distributive property. Now, it's a little bit easier to understand it or see it with some numbers. So I'll give you a quick example. If you had 2, and on the inside here, 3 plus 4, how would you do that? Like the normal way. Forget about the distributive property. If I just said, hey, what is this equal to? You would say, well, I need to do what's inside the parentheses first. That's always the number one thing. And 3 plus 4 is 7. So if I were to do that, then the 2 would be here, and then I would have multiplied by 7. I would do the inside of the parentheses first. All right? And then from that, I would get what would be 2 times 7? 14. Okay, so basically I would go and get the answer of 14 and that would be the answer. Now according to the distributive property, this whole thing can be written as follows. This can also be written as 2 times 3 because this 2 gets applied to the 3, multiplied because they're multiplied, 2 times 3 and then also 2 times 4. 2 times 4. Alright, now let's say what happens when we do this. Notice we have addition, but we also have multiplication. The multiplication always comes before the addition. So the 2 times 3 is going to give you 6. The plus comes along for the ride. The 2 times 4 is going to give you 8. And then finally you do the 6 plus 8. What does that give you? 14. So you see, no matter how you do it, whether you do it the, the way I've taught you in the past, doing inside the parentheses first and then multiplying, you get an answer of 14. Or if you use this distributive property, applying the multiplication to each term inside and then simplifying the answer, you also get 14. So I'm just showing you that these are equivalent, and that's all you really need to know. So now we're just going to crank through and do a bunch of problems to give you some practice and experience with the distributive property. It really is something that you use constantly. So, for instance, this might look familiar from the last section. If you have a negative out here, and then you have 4 plus negative 2 out here, how does that happen? Well, this distributive property applies to anything sitting out here. In this case, it's, it's a negative sign, but really you need to be thinking that this is really negative 1. When you have a negative and there's nothing written here, it's really negative 1 out here. The negative 1 is getting applied inside. Okay, so however you want to think about it, this negative gets applied to the 4, which is going to just be negative 4, and the negative also gets applied to this quantity negative 2, but then you have two negatives sitting next to each other, which makes it positive 2, because two negatives, we said before, uh, makes you, makes you, gives you a positive. So what you end up having on the inside there is negative 4 plus 2. Now how do you handle that? Well, you are adding a positive and a negative, so you subtract them. 4 minus 2 is 2, and the sign of the answer comes from the larger absolute value, which is uh, coming from here because this is the larger number, so the answer is negative 2. And that is the distributive property used to distribute that negative sign in. And that, that's something that I didn't really tell you the name of, but that's what you were doing before. All right, so what if you had uh, two parentheses, 8 minus 10? All right, and then you wanted to, to do that. Of course, you could just do the 8 minus 10 and get the answer, and you can multiply by 2, but we're trying to learn the distributive property. So the 2 is going to be applied in to the 8, making 2 times 8. The negative sign is going to come from the inside. That has to follow along, joining those two terms, and then the 2 will be applied to the 10. 
Okay, so you can envision this 2 being applied to an 8 and the 2 being applied to the 10, the negative sign just follows along for the ride. And so what you're going to end up having here is 2 times 8 is 16 minus 2 times 10 is 20. And so you have 16 minus 20. How do you handle that? We talked about that before. You could write it as 16 plus negative 20, or you could just recognize it subtraction. So go ahead and do the subtraction. 20 minus 16, even though it's not written like that, is going to give you 4, and it's going to be negative 4 because the sign is going to come from the larger absolute value. This is a positive 16. This is really a negative 20. So the answer is going to give you negative 4. All right. So let's do a couple more, and then we'll retire this section. What if we have 2? parentheses 30 plus 5. All right, so the 2 gets applied to everything inside. So what you have is 2 times 30, right? And then the plus comes from what's already written there, and then you have 2 times 5. And then when you do the answer, you have to do everything in the proper order of operation. So the multiplication comes first. 2 times 30 is 60, and the 2 times 5 is 10. And now after all the multiplication is done, you can add those together and say the answer is 70. Now obviously it's positive because everything was positive to begin with there. Right? Now what if you have 5, and on the inside here you have 70 minus 2. So again, you can distribute this in. 5 times 70. The minus sign comes along from the ride from the inside of the parentheses, and then you have the 5 times 2. Again, Multiplication comes before subtraction, so the 5 times 70, uh, if you forget how to do that, 5 times 7 is 35, then you have an extra 0 here from the 70, so 35 with another 0 is 350, so 5 times 70 is 350, and then you're going to subtract 10 because 5 times 2 is 10, and so you're going to get 340, obviously, because 350 minus 10 is 340. All right, now we'll do one last guy here. We'll have 3 parentheses, 6 minus 10. And we'll apply this 3 to each term. 3 times 6. The minus comes along for the ride. And then 3 times 10. And so we do the multiplication first. 3 times 6 is 18. The minus comes along for the ride. 3 times 10 is 30. And so now you have 18 minus 30, which you could write as 18 plus a negative 30 and then do it in terms of addition. But as you get more experience, you realize this is just subtraction. So we can just do the 30 minus the 18 which is going to give you 12, and then the sign is just going to be the larger absolute value, which in this case, since this is like positive 18, this is like negative 30, then it's going to be negative 12. That's going to be your, your final answer. That's all I have for this lesson. I do want to give you a little more practice with the distributive property, so make sure you understand this stuff. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll do a few more problems and then wrap it up. But the distributive property is something you will use all the time from solving equations to simplifying things. It's something that you use all the time. So let's go on to the next section and get some more practice right now.